What is going on YouTube? Today, I got something from somewhere I've gotten before, but I got a new menu item because apparently they got a new menu item. So I went to Mary Brown's and I actually seen this on like, I was looking on Uber Eats for like what I should get for a video. And I seen Mary Brown's has something new. So I'm like, let me get something new. So I went there and got something new. So first we got the taters right here looking extra dry, extra colorless. I got this, which is also new to me. They're called chicken twists. They're like buffalo chicken or something. I don't know. You could see it there. Let's take one out so you can just see it. Yeah, right there. And then the star of the show, it's called the K Crunch. I guess it's like Korean chicken in a sandwich. I was like, I gotta get that. So let me get that. So that's what I did. I went and got this. So let's take it out here. And before we get started, guys, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below if anything you want to try anything to talk about. I'm down to this. Oh, which check out the timestamps down below. So here it is looking K crunchy. I don't know what, uh, I think it's like, it's a chicken sandwich, pickles, and like some sauce. So there's that, and then there's this right here. The chicken twist. Looking, they both look pretty good, to be quite honest with you. Looks pretty good. So we're gonna start this off here. First bite with the Korean chicken sandwich or cake crunch sandwich. Hmm. No, it just kind of tastes like a, like a regular chicken sandwich, I think. Oh, taters. I need a bit more salt, but I don't know. Not too bad. I think it needs, I think, I don't, it tastes kind of regular to me, honestly. I might just be losing it, but let's see. No. I think it's a bit sweeter. Not really too crunchy. The sauce is nice. It's got like kind of like a, like kind of like a sweet and spicy type sauce going on with it. Honestly, it doesn't taste too much different from the regular chicken sandwiches, I don't think. I mean, Tastes pretty good though. And you know what, I actually kind of like it. So maybe it doesn't taste the same as the chicken sandwiches. It just tastes a bit sweet. It has a little, like, little, little bit of spiciness to it. So, let's try this chicken twist here. Break it open. It's not opening how I thought it would open. I see a little bit of buffalo chicken in it. It doesn't taste too bad. A little bit dry, if you ask me. Yeah. Mm. Pretty good. Anything with chicken in it is always a plus to me, but this is a little bit dry. But anyways, how was your guys' day today? Mine wasn't too bad. Just went to the gym, you know? Got this and came home. But I do have a story for you guys. I may have mentioned it before or not, or talked about it before or not, but if I did, you're gonna hear it a second time. That's one thing about me. People always say that I repeat stories. It's just because I have so many stories and I like telling them that I forget which ones I tell. So, you know, and now we're like 200 something videos deep. So, you know, I checked to see if any like video titles were similar to what I'm about to talk about and it's not. So this is a story about how I, I wouldn't say the words tricked. Maybe the better words coerced or influenced or brainwashed, you know, into, into, uh, into being in a pyramid scheme and how I got my friend into it too. Back in the kind of early 2010s, mid 2010s, pyramid schemes, I don't know, for some reason, just became so popular. I don't know where this, this, this pickle just fell right out of the, uh...
but yeah, Pyramid Scheme just, just blew up out of nowhere. Like, it just became so big. So, I remember I had this friend. And he was invited by one of his other friends to come to, like, some sort of, like, meeting, some sort of thing. And he was just like, yo, do you want to go? And I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go. Sounds interesting, right? Two days to his house. There was, like, 10 to 20 other people there, right? And basically, he was, like, talking about how... It was opportunity for us, yada yada yada. They play a video for us. And the videos like playing like a bunch of scenes of people like on like a stage talking about some sort of like energy drink. And there's like cars and there's like famous people. There's Dr. Oz in this video that they're showing all of us. Us we're being we're like I think 17, 18, 19 around that age, right? And some guy comes. He starts like talking to us. And then me and my friend were like, wow. This is pretty interesting. I mean, this could be like a good business opportunity for us. We're being showed it first, right? And we're just like, yeah, we should like do this. We should join this, whatever this is, right? We didn't really know. So we didn't join it at that time. We actually waited like five or six months, or at least I waited five or six months. And then I got invited to it again. So I went to it again. So I went to it again with one of my other friends who was like bringing, who wanted to bring me into it. And then we seen it and I seen this again. I'm like, wow, so many people. Cause at this time when I went the second time, there's like way more people there, like a lot of people there. And I'm like, wow, this thing really grew. I could have really joined like six months ago when like no one knew about this. And now everyone knows about it. I was like, I should join now. And then I eventually did join. So it was a pyramid scheme called Vima. I think it's like V-E-E-M-A. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So yeah, pyramid scheme. The whole thing was getting people to join the organization right and then you get paid off of how many people join the organization so you have two tier you have like two it's basically you literally pyramid you and then there's two branches you have one thing with one branch you have like one side and then you get people and then they get people and they get people they get people on this side you have they get people these get people they get people and then the more people you get per month every time they renew their subscription because you have to buy product every month 150 bucks right so every month that everyone under you does it you get money for it right typical pyramid scheme right but i didn't know because that you know what to be honest i didn't know really what a pyramid scheme was when i joined it so i got it i joined it and then i got my best friend into it i can't remember if i brought him to one of those like events but i got my best friend into it right oh man we tried so hard to like get people in we got like one or two people in a couple of our friends we got our i got my like ex-girlfriend's dad in it for like a month you know and i remember we tried so hard to get people in it we were at york at the time right after school i went to york Bridget, i went to Laurier, then i went to york and at york we would try to set up like meetings where like to get people to come and then we would get like our friend the one who brought me and like he's also my friend with my best friend that i brought into like the 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 pyramid scheme too he's also close friends with him too so we would get him to come to york and he would talk in these meetings that we'd set up but the thing is we didn't have a classroom for the meetings like scheduled and we could never schedule library rooms and like scott so scott's the library by the way so what we used to do is we usually just like go look into classrooms and see if classrooms are like in use and just use them for the presentations and there'd be times where we use it for a presentation and sometimes people would come in because they have like a class soon and we'd be like oh wow but you know we did it and we never got caught for doing it it's pretty pretty interesting yeah honestly it was quite a time I said you would keep getting product all the time. Like every month you'd have to buy product. I had so much cases of this drink. And to the point until it got to the point where I just leave it at the warehouse. I wouldn't even go get it. And one would be like, oh, is the drink not what you're supposed to be selling? No. What they wanted us to do is take those drinks and give it away for free at these meetings or just give it for free to people just to introduce them to a business. And the way we make money is from bringing people in and keeping them in the business month over the month. 
So I got my friend into it. I got into it. We got a couple of other people into it and we just wasted so much money. And to this day, these guys make fun of me. To this day, even though my other friend was in it, he makes fun of me too. Because there's like different tiers to it. There's like bronze, silver, gold, whatever it is. I got to bronze, so like the very like first one when you bring three people in. And you get a plaque for it. These guys took a picture. I threw that plaque away. These guys took a picture. And every time we all hang out together, my friend who took the picture brings up the picture about how it was an pyramid scheme and all this stuff. Like, man, I deserve it though. I deserve it. And then after a while, I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to pay this 150. I don't even know what I was in the 150. Well, I guess I had a job at the time. It's still like 150 every month was just like, at that time, it's a lot of money because everything was cheaper, right? So it's just like, wow. Why am I paying this? So eventually I got out of it. And there's another one that my friend was the same one who got me into was getting into. By this time, I wasn't like like screw pyramid schemes and all that stuff. I was more like, I don't just don't want to do this anymore just because I don't want to spend the money. But he was like, oh, there's another one that's better and it's cheaper. So I was like, okay, let's get into it. And then I told, tried telling my friend to get into it. My best friend, he didn't want to get into it, but so I got into it. And then I got into it for like a month and I just refunded my money because I'm like, I don't even know what this business is. Because before, even though it was a pyramid scheme, like, it'd be like older oh, drinks for this other one called Wake Up Now. I don't even know what it was. I think it was like sleeping pills or something. No idea what it was. So. I wasted so much money. I know what you're thinking. You're just like, oh, you learned your lesson. Yes. But there's another time I got tricked into it again. Now this one, this one wasn't my fault. So I was applying for jobs. I was mass applying for jobs. I actually left one of my jobs for this. Like I left a job to do this job, right? Cause I didn't know. I was mass applying to jobs and then I got a job at Paramount, right? And then I was working at Paramount wherever. And then I got another call for a job and it was to be like, what they said was to be like front desk for charities, right? You'd be talking to people about charities, right? So I was like, okay. Sure, that actually sounds better. And it was paying me more than Paramount was paying me at the time. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. So quit Paramount. And then I went to this other job. Plus this other job was closer. Paramount was in like, it was technically in Scarborough, but they removed us to Mississauga. So I went to this interview, right? In this interview, it was so weird. It was such a big red flag, but I still decided to go through with it at least for one day. But I was in that interview. The lady was like so rude. Like the girl next to me, we were sitting in like chairs and there's a lady at the desk and we were, the girl was sitting next to me was asking me a question because we both got this like sheet of paper that we need to fill out. She was asking me questions about it. And I was trying to help her out because like we're both doing this together. And she's like, oh, you can't talk. You can't talk. You can't talk. Are you here to make friends? Or are you here to work? And I'm like both. Like, why is the secretary being so rude, right? Apparently she's part of the company, but you know, that's neither here nor there. That last bite here. So, you want to The interviewer is some guy with like neck tattoos, hand tattoos. I brought you seeing Talk about how he's a millionaire. He does condo development. He just made 40 million, all that stuff like that. I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like at the time I was like sold at it because I still don't like, it didn't really click in my head that I'm supposed to be at a job for a charity and why I'm talking to this guy, right? But I was like, whatever. So you're, he's like, you're hired. I'm like, okay, cool. I came back the next day. I think my interview was like on a Sunday afternoon and my, like, my first shift, shift was Monday morning. So, Go to my first ship. Get there at 7 a.m. And when I tell you, I walked in, and I was like, what did I get myself into? Wow. I walked in, I get into a room. There's like 30, 40 people in this room. Everyone's standing in a circle. It's like a big room, 40 people, just standing in a circle. All right, big circle. People like were walking into the middle and talking and talking about like motivational stuff. The same exact pyramid scheme things these guys were talking about. They were talking about there. They'd just be like, oh, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. Oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do that. Right. So next guy comes out of nowhere. This guy's like face tattoos and stuff. He's talking to me and like this other person. 
And I'm just like, what is this? Like, what, what are we talking about? Isn't this not for a charity? Why are we like, why is her motivational speech, motivational speech just happening right now at seven in the morning? Like, what is going on here? So eventually this guy comes up to me, this like tall guy, and he's like, oh, you're Shamit, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, come with me. And I'm like, okay, sure. So I went with him to the other corner of the room and me, it was me, him, and like, I think three or four other people right and i guess we're a team and he was just explaining what we're going to be doing right and he's like oh we're going to go to this like place we're going to go to this like wherever and we're going to try to get people to sign up for charity and if you get people to sign up for charity you get money for it and i'm like i'm not information desk for charity what do you mean i have to get people to sign up for charity so he's like yeah and then he showed me the tier system and he's like oh you get paid like what is it 90 bucks per person you sign up right and then he was just like once you get a lot of people to sign up and you've like showed us that you're you're good you can be like a team leader and a team leader you get like money from people you sign up plus you get money from the other people that they sign up like the people under you your team ease your team team not teammates but the people under you that you're training you get money from the people they sign up and i'm like wow another pyramid scheme i was like they're, they're on indeed now <laughs> so it's like they're actually becoming innovative so i was like wow what do I do? I'm stuck in this place now and I can't just, I could have just been like, so here's the thing about me. And I've always been like this. If the situation's weird or bad, or I feel like I'm going to get a story out of it, I will stay in it just to get the story. Just to tell people, because I love having stories. I love having stories. It's why I could tell just like random stories here on like the channel. So uh, I was like, wow, another pyramid scheme, but with charity, how does that work? So we hopped into this guy's 1998 Honda Civic and we drive to Bloor and Dufferin, right where right where Dufferin Mall is, we drive to Bloor and Dufferin, and we are on that corner in the rain because it starts raining, trying to get people to sign up for charity. And let me tell you, the the process to get people to sign up for the charity are not is not like it's not easy. You have to convince them. The charity is also forty dollars biweekly. You have to talk to them, convince them. They have to sign up on like a little like ipad thing and then we have to call like somewhere to confirm and then they have to like give their card information over the phone it's like the sketchiest thing ever right so on that corner from like 9 a.m i think 7 or 8 p.m we were there for over 10 hours or 10 hours right how about it? trying to get people in the charity and I tell you, I hated every moment of it because I was like, one, this is not what I was told I was going to do. And two, why is it so expensive? Get people in charity. Where I was bi weekly for charity is actually kind of expensive. So I was like, no. But to be fair, it really is a skill because my team lead got like four people in front of my eyes to sign up for charity to spend the $40 bi weekly. One of them was a girl who's as young as me. At the time, I think I was like 21 or 22. Or like 20 maybe? So I guess it really is a skill. And yeah, I was just there. It was raining. I was talking to some guy. This guy was just like, you need to leave this job. Some random guy on the street. He's like, listen, I did what you're doing. I've been other pyramid schemes. He's like, I'm 32 now. The man didn't look 32. He's like, I'm 32 now. Like, trust me, you need to like go do sales for something else. And you know, you're a demographic, it, like for what you're doing, it's supposed to be younger. So you need to dress younger. Cause I'm like dressing like a suit and tie on Lauren Dufferin, right? So I don't know, but either way, I was just like, this is hell. And I just avoided trying try to talk to people, but they would be like, go talk to someone, go pop your cherry, go talk to someone. I was like, oh, fine. So I wouldn't talk to someone. Person's like, oh no. And then just let, and just walked away. So there was like, oh, there's like, at least you tried. There's some shirtless guy with a dog walking around yelling, I don't know. One of the guys apparently got him into charity in the past and he's still paying it. So I guess one of the Bloor and Dufferin intersection um, regulars. Also, there's a churro stand there. It's pretty cool too. It's pretty good. And then I went home or we finished and we were on our way back. We just were like, do you like it? Do you like it? We can come back. He getting money. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never in my life am I going back there. So went back. I was talking to the, my guy's trainer, his boss. That guy was in flip flops and he was like, had an eye patch on. He's like, he scratched his cornea, whatever, because they were all went partying on a yacht or something. Some nonsense. I literally just left, went home, and I just never looked back.
I was like, wow. I can't believe I wasted a whole day and quit my other like legitimate job for this. Crazy. With that being said, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below if anything you want to try anything to talk about. I'm down to those. I'll check out the chat videos in the side. And yeah, cake crunch sandwich is pretty good. It's a bit better than a regular uh, Mary Brown sandwich. I was going to say Mary Poppins, Mary Brown sandwich, but not much. I'll give it like a 6.7. Um, the chicken twist was like whatever. And the tater tots are also just always been whatever to me. So, you know. So yeah, I think 6.7 is pretty good. And I hope you guys enjoyed my little story about my pyramid scheme adventures and getting tricked into one and coerced or brainwashed, whatever you want to call it, or just me being like a dumb kid, which to be fair, when I was a kid, that's pretty dumb. So, but again, as always, thank you for watching. Mary Brown, 6.7, first review and peace.